Welcome to Colony TV, the governmental educational channel for the town of Colony. Welcome to Getting to Know You. My name is Joan Ash. Today we're going to be talking to Kristen Holler. She is the executive director of The Barn, also known as the Albany Barn. It's in Albany on South Swan and Second. It's an artist incubator space. It's a community center. It's um, apartments. It's, it's a lot of things. So let's why don't we get to it? So it is a lot of things, isn't it, Krista? It is a lot of things. So we're actually on the corner of North Swan and 2nd okay. Street. North Swan and 2nd. It's the old St. Joseph's Academy. Most yes. people know where that is. I, I was saying I was probably driven, driven by it a million times. And I saw the picture. I go, I know that spot. <laughs> yes, yeah, so it's a great um, sort of iconic building, um, you know, in the Arbor Hill neighborhood. Uh, and something that many people have an emotional connection to and memories of. Um, and so the building, unfortunately, had kind of um, been vacant for almost two decades. Um, and so, so the school closed when, in the 70s? The school closed um, in the mid-70s. Okay. And then it was used again briefly as a boxing gym and athletic club um, in the late 80s okay. and early 90s. And then since then, as as you know, was was vacant until construction began. Okay. So, what is the idea? Why don't we? You can tell us how this all started. What is the idea behind the Albany Barn? And it it sounds like it just opened last fall, but it took a while to get to that. So, why don't you go into a little history here? And right. We'll so, so this is a an idea about ten years in the making. Uh, the founder of the organization, Jeffrey Morell. Um, started in a, another initiative uh, back in 2004 called Brock to Rebuild. It was in response to the Asian tsunami um, that happened that year. And essentially what he okay, did... Okay, the, there were the concerts they used to have. Okay, yes, all yep. Right, yep. In, in partnership with the Albany Underground Artists and um, you know several local independent artists, uh, the Palace Theater kind of put together these benefit concerts featuring all local talent um, to aid in disaster relief and raise funds. Um, and so in about six weeks and on about a thousand dollar cash budget um, you know they were able to turn that into over twenty thousand okay. dollars um, in in disaster relief aid um, and out of that kind of came a couple of things the realization that Albany had this really great art scene um, but no real centralized location mm -hmm. for it um, and then also a clamoring by artists um, and performers for affordable quality working space as well as living space. Mm -hmm. We all sort of know the plight of the starving artist yes, who yes. works several unrelated jobs to pay their you know, market rate rent um, and buy their art supplies, whatever those may be, and, and sort just, of moonlights as an artist. But you're not just talking about musicians. You're talking about musicians, artists, writers, dancers, um, th Absolutely. theater people. We cast a really, um, a really wide net, so it's not just the visual and fine arts, um, but yes, exactly okay. like you said, performance arts. We go so far as to talk about things like culinary arts and some of the um, arts that are traditionally um, grouped into the craft category, like fiber arts, mm -hmm. um, clothing design, all of those kinds of things we would consider um, you know, to be an art. Sure. So really um, creative. Okay, so there was a clamor for this, and then what was the next? Uh... Um, and so this sort of idea of the barn came about, um, and we get a lot of, well, you're in a school, why is it called the barn? <laughs> <laughs> so the idea was a community sort of mobilizing and coming together to raise a structure. Yeah, a barn raising, sure. Right, a barn raising that would benefit the whole community. Mm -hmm. um, and so Albany Barn was founded um, by Jeff Morrell, and um, you know he sort of did a great job of collecting people along the way, myself included, who really believed in this idea of supporting artists and giving them, um, you know, an opportunity to really uh, live and work affordably in quality space, mm -hmm. and that being able to sort of elevate what they're doing artistically, as well as better position them to utilize their creative talents as a give back to the community. 
Um, so again, if you're spending less of your time working these sort of odd, unrelated jobs, you have more time to create, um, you know, and maybe you also can teach mm -hmm. whatever your creative skill is, or you can curate an exhibition that's open to the public, or you could do a community beautification project, you know, a public art project. So there's lots of ways that people can get involved when they don't have that sort of daily struggle going on just to afford their sure. rent and their studio space. Well, now, Albany has always been known, the artist area, or whatever you want to call it, is, you know, Lark Street's always been known as the more section for a lot of that stuff. Was, why was the Arbor Hill area, show, I mean, I know you got the nice big building, but was there a particular reason why you went to that area, or is it because you got the big building, or does it? So the... Um, Originally, the organization, you know, was was conceptual. The this project, this building, was very conceptual, um, and it was not tied to a neighborhood. You know, we were, um, we knew it would work best in a neighborhood where there was a need for a sort of revitalizing okay. effect. Okay. Um, you know, but initially, it was there was no connection to the Arbor Hill neighborhood. Um, <clears throat> Did you look at but any really, other places, or is that the building you? Um, there were some some warehouses mm -hmm. and other buildings that that were looked at, but the really unique thing about this, um, you know, we consider ourselves a creative placemaking project, and that's not, although it's something that's up and coming, it's not terribly unique. But what makes this project unique is the fact that we had great partners in the Albany Housing Authority, oh, okay. and so the Albany Housing Authority um, had taken a great interest in the Arbor Hill neighborhood, um, had come to own St. Joseph, the former St. Joseph's Academy. Um, and was working very diligently on constructing a 10-year strategic plan for the neighborhood and putting it into action, okay. really implementing those strategies. Part of that was an adaptive reuse of St. Joe's. You know, it kind of become this 800-pound gorilla of blight, this yeah. beautiful historic <laughs> building just laying vacant. Um, and so one of our founding board members um, at Anchor, who's an architect, um, had worked with the Housing Authority before and said, you know, we need to get around the table and kind of talk about this concept of the barn and this great building that the Housing Authority, you know, has, has come to own. Um, and so Darren Scott at the Albany Housing Authority um, was really... Um, instrumental in getting this off the ground and sort of, you know, this is outside of what yeah. what a housing authority normally yeah. does, but understood and really, um, you know, took to heart the revitalizing effect and the potential impact for the neighborhood to have, um, you know, sort of a creative class of people um, move in and And, and it's still, it's still within back. walking distance of... Well, Albany's a good walking town. I mean, you can walk almost Oh, anywhere. absolutely. You can walk downtown, um, you know, where about a block or two up from the Palace Theater yeah. and North Pearl Street and all of those kind of areas. Um, you could walk to Lark Street if you if you so, wanted to. It's so a few blocks. the website will be on the screen. It's albanybarn.org. I was I, I took the virtual tour and it looks like this what you filmed was before the renovation obviously. So what kind of it didn't look like the building the inside was in too good of a shape. Although it's gigantic spaces. Yes. Um, so the building, I would say, was less than a decade <laughs> away from just falling in on itself. Um, you know, the the roof had significant damage. It was inhabited by birds and <laughs> all sorts of other uh, creatures. Um, and so, yeah, the building was in very rough shape. Um, it actually took, construction began in February of 2012 and actually took a full year just to do the abatement process okay. to remove all of the... Um, you know, sort of nastiness. Well, that's of not bad. <laughs> two years. That's not too uh, hard. Yeah, it was 2014, so it's not too bad. Right, yeah. So that first full year was, was just abatement, and then we had a public groundbreaking in April of 2013, and then the grand opening in April of 2014. So. Okay, so now, was the idea from the beginning, instead of having all this artist space for performances and rehearsal and whatever, was the initial idea to have apartments also to live there? Or was that did that come later? Was it... That was part of the initial the idea. Okay. Um, Live and work in the same. Okay. Absolutely. So it it serves two purposes. Um, you know, you don't have to pay for two spaces. Uh -huh. um, you know, uh, creative people tend to you know find inspiration maybe not at <laughs> traditional hours. Um, you know, so if you all of a sudden wake up in the middle of the night and you're a writer or you're a painter or, sure. or whatever your craft is and you've you've been inspired to create something, you know, your art um, and hopefully eventually livelihood is is right around you okay. and you can sort of create in your own space and and have right. that access and that freedom to do that so you, now you have 22 22 um, apartments is that, that's correct and yes. 
I thought, you know, you only opened um, last year. I was going to say, are they all filled yet or not? But it sounds like they've, they're all full as we speak. We're, we're they are. Way. So um, we've had tremendous response, um, which is uh, not a total surprise to us. Um, we had about a 300-person artist uh, mailing list when we started out on this, yeah. um, you know, saying, you know, we're renting up and these are available. You know, and people's, that's, that was accumulated over this almost 10-year period. And again, period. Your, your list encompassed all the art, or many, right. many arts. Okay. People who had expressed interest in either living or okay. working at the barn when it finally came to fruition. We had about a 300-person contact list. Okay. And so we started reaching out and saying we're accepting applications. Um, and we very quickly um, you know, received our first 50 and then our first 100 applications. And so we went through the selection process. Well, which I, no, I'm not, that's amazing that you got, um, you could have had, a, you could have had a, apartments for three times as many. <laughs> As many. Absolutely. Um, we so our first twenty-two tenants moved in in December, but we're continuing to take okay. applications um, and to screen people. There's a, a selection process. So we have. Um, it's on the website. It'll, you can read all how to. All, yeah. How that all so goes. there's a yeah an interview process. Um, okay. So what's I mean not that the, what's the breakdown of the twenty-two artists? They do. Uh, are they all musicians? Are they all theater people? Are no, we? so we actually, um, we have a pretty diverse group oh, okay. of, of people in terms of medium and background and, and really in, in all ways that you can sort of classify diversity. <laughs> um, you know, we have a number of visual artists, although their mediums um, vary. And what I find very interesting is that many of the artists work in a variety of mediums. You know, oh, okay. so maybe they're a visual artist, but they sculpt and they paint. Mm -hmm. Or they're a visual artist and a musician, um, or a visual artist and an actor. Oh, okay. Um, and so we do have a great variety. We have, um, you know, everything from a stand-up comedian um, <laughs> to, uh, you know, bloggers um, and, and kind of everything in between, okay. a few musicians. So, um, so that's 22 apartments. For, they're, all, they're full at the moment, so anyone watching, can, can people still, can you... Uh, still apply or get absolutely or? we're going to continue to oh, take okay. applications and go through the selection process okay. so that we maintain a waiting list all right so what can you talk a little bit about the various um i don't know what you'd call them rehearsal rooms um artist space gallery what's what are the what, what are the sizes and the number of those kind of spaces Sure. So um, we have a, the design of the building was to leave the spaces fairly flexible so that we can accommodate changing needs, um, you know, in the arts community as they occur. So um, we have several studios that are, we call them group studios, but they can serve as larger studios for individual artists or for, you know, collectives mm -hmm. or groups that would like to work together. Um, then we also have individual studios that are smaller in scale for people who, you know, maybe don't work in a large format. Okay. Or things now, are like these that. for just the people who live in the building or can anyone no these are these can be rented by um, by any artist they don't have to oh, okay. um, necessarily live in the building in fact um, none of the tenants who live in the building have a work studio um, in addition because their their apartments are really meant to serve as, as their well. workspace oh, okay. as well right. um, some of the musicians in the building will use our rehearsal suites okay. um, you know if they have a band or things like that all right. um, but as far as leasing studios, generally, you know, um, all of the visual artists and writers and things like that, um, performance artists, okay. tend to find that their their living space is more than adequate for that. So uh, over and above the 22 that live there, are, are all your spaces, are they being used or rented out over the term? Are they, are right. They? So we have 19 artists um, who have leased dedicated spaces, dedicated workspaces. Oh, okay. um, and that's everything from multimedia, um, production, um, audiovisual recording um, and production. Um, we do have musicians, um, visual artists in a variety of mediums. We have a graphic designer who um, oh, has their office oh. at the barn. So a little bit of um, variety in terms of visual artists who are just looking for a work studio. Mm -hmm. um, and then folks who are you know, both creating and have um, sort of a business application to their, to okay. their art. So you have a, I see on, you have a digital media lab also. Now what's so that's actually in the works. Oh, okay. um, the 
the Media Lab will be something um, that like, comes probably in 2015, um, something we're continuing to, um, you know, kind of develop how that will work and also um, fundraise to fit up that space. Um, but the idea is to Is that provide, for, like, filmmakers? Is that what that is? Or um, am I? It should serve a variety of purposes. Oh, okay. So the idea is to have um, good quality computers and design software so that, um, you know, you could do video production, you could do audio visual oh, okay. um, editing and production. You could also do things like if you are a visual artist, writer, performer, you could create your own marketing materials or design your website. So it really can serve as a, um, as a resource to any type of artist who's looking to market themselves in a way that's more professional. Um, you know, and part of that would also be bringing in folks to teach them those skills. Oh, okay. So how to use design software, how to develop and maintain a web page and all of those sort of skills that don't necessarily come part and parcel with your artistic talent. Oh, wow. Now, is the city partially um, fund you guys, or is it um, you get? Is it a typical you get money from all over the place? Um, so the city was um, definitely instrumental in the funding for the redevelopment of the building. Um, they um, have been very supportive. Um, in, in helping that process along. And so we're not publicly funded. Albany Barn as an entity isn't, isn't publicly funded oh, okay. at the moment. Um, but they were very supportive oh, and, good, and have good. been a great partner in the funding well, it, of the redevelopment. It sounds like things are really hopping down there. Absolutely. We've, like I said, we've been fully operational for about a month now. That's both the, you know, work studios mm -hmm. and the residential spaces being open. And we've had over 1,100 people through the door um, for a variety of different events. We've had a concert. Uh, well, that's what I was going to ask you next. Why don't you talk about some of the events you have? These are for these are for the public. All kinds of arts. I, I see you have. Um, you have an open mic night every month. You have a first Friday. You have a, I don't know if I'm saying this right, is it called Sabli? Sabali. Sabali, all right, I'm, 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 I forgot the A there. That's actually an initiative of one of the residential tenants. Right. Um, he is doing a monthly um, African drumming and dance okay. group. Um, and that's actually run out of our gallery, stage one. And he's raising funds and collecting books um, for a library project in Senegal, West Africa. Oh, okay. And so that's an initiative that he kind of came into um, the barn already having an idea for and, and starting out with. He actually rented space at stage one for this project okay. before becoming a tenant. But that continues. Um, it's on the last Saturday of every month okay. at 7 p.m. at our gallery, stage one. And then um, everyone open to the public, to anybody? Open to the public. Um, and then mo open mic night is the fourth Tuesday of every month, okay. and that's held at the barn, also f yeah, free and open to the public. And we participate in First Friday, oh, that's the, um, the um, citywide arts walk. Okay. Um, that's obviously the first Friday of every month. We hold an opening reception um, from 5 to 9 p.m. This month we're doing the exhibition is called Street Signs. It's an exhibition of urban artwork. Okay. Now, do you foresee in the future having um, other kinds of performances there, concerts, plays, or whatever? Or Absolutely. And um, is, there a, is there a gallery at the moment? There or? is a gallery. So we have stage one gallery, and then we also have exhibition space at the barn. Okay, so stage one is a like a component of your of yeah, the barn. Yeah, so okay. that kind of served as our headquarters while we were, oh, okay. um, you know, awaiting the, the finished product of the barn. So stage one is on North Swan Street. It's a storefront gallery. And um, we've operated that for almost four years now. Um, and we've had monthly exhibitions oh, okay. there in the entire time that we've been in that space. All right. So getting back to what I was saying before, what, what kind of events are you foreseeing in the future for artistic uh um, Music, theater, dance, or a little of everything? Or little of you everything. Do you do not even know yet? <laughs> uh, I, you know, the things that have come up um, since we've started taking event and program proposals, there's been such a wide variety and things that I had never really thought about or had foreseen, you know, being a, a popular mm -hmm. use for the space. So we've um, we've had a couple of concerts already. We have a couple more scheduled um, throughout the end of this year. And actually our first um, sort of delving into live theater, we're partnering with uh, Confetti Stage, um, and they're bringing their June production to the barn. Okay, um, Bent, it's okay. called. The Confetti Stage, that's just a local... It is. They um, they generally um, do their performances out of the Masonic Hall. Oh, that's right, okay. In downtown. And then, but they're going to do one of their performances over... At the barn. All right. Now, one thing I noticed, I was going through your webpage, one thing you've, you've seen to be emphasizing is... Um, it's also a little bit of a community center. Do groups have meetings there? I've, 
Absolutely. Um, so um, we actually just held Preservation Merit Awards for Historic Albany Foundation. Oh, okay. um, you know, and so um, groups that are interested could, you know, ob obviously, um, you know, hold sort of their um, annual meetings, oh, okay. public meetings and things at the space. Um, we also are available for, um, you know, youth and adult programming. So currently we're working with a couple of different groups, um, you know, to provide rehearsal space and meeting space okay. for, um, you know, for youth groups and things like well, that. Well, the other thing I noticed on your website, you seem to emphasize in a lot of your stuff here is g getting youth involved in, in the arts, in various aspects of the arts. Was, was that a main, did this come about naturally or you, you, you're really trying to get some kids more uh, involved in the arts? I think it's something that um, maybe when we first started out with, we weren't sure that that was going to be something that we would tackle as an organization, but more that we would provide the space for that um, to occur. Um, but again, being in the Arbor Hill neighborhood, and particularly North Swan Street, uh, there are a lot of young families and there are a lot of young children in that neighborhood. Mm -hmm. um, and so uh, it's, it's almost impossible to really ignore the fact that there's a need, <laughs> um, you know, for youth yeah. programming and for um, activities for, for kids to do. Um, it's unfortunate, but, um, you know, just budgetary constraints and things like that, programming, um, you know, outside of sort of that um, regular curriculum, yeah. academic curriculum, you know, is just is suffering these days. And so any way that we can kind of um, aid in that, either whether it's providing space for a group that, um, you know, wants to provide programming or partnering with organizations to provide youth programming. Um, we've obviously gotten this far on partnerships and okay. we like to uh, collaborate and bring in um, other organizations to do youth programming. So one, one thing I've been reading in the, in the news and I, I read all kinds of stuff, but it seems like younger people, they say, aren't, aren't moving to the suburbs as much as in the old, day, the old days, as they used to. But it seems like cities are being revitalized. People are choosing to live in cities again. I don't know if it's a national movement, but it's, I've seen it written about in the New York Times and magazine articles. Do you think, is this some kind of trend? That you've, have you been reading about this? Or places like these little artist colonies, are they popping up all over? Are they? Creative placemaking is really spreading um, pretty significantly. It's, um, we consulted on this project with a group car called Art Space that has about um, 37 of these projects all throughout the United States. They're based in Milwaukee. Um, they have projects in New Orleans and New York City, um, Virginia, and really all over the place. And it's, it's you know, sort of shown to be effective that if mm -hmm. you bring sort of those culture creators, those creative talent, um, you know, talents to an area, that it does attract, um, you know, additional reinvestment. And, and if you manage that and, it, and uh, you know, sort of encourage responsible reinvestment, it really can have a, a revitalizing okay. effect on a community. And I think definitely, um, you know, just the expense of, of travel and, and owning cars and things like that, um, you know, uh, urban living just tends to be um, more convenient. Mm -hmm. You know, if you choose not to have a vehicle or you want a bike to work and things like that, okay. well, I think there, that that's popular with a lot of our residents. Is is your is your stuff you're doing there? Is it is it part of a bigger Albany plan? Do you, are you engaged with you know, any? Like a city, and or you guys are sort of a standalone kind of. So we're very much aligned with the goals of the Arbor Hill Neighborhood Plan, okay, as well as the the Albany Twenty Thirty Plan. Oh, okay. um, and and Arbor Hill is definitely a focus area of that plan. Um, you know, there's been tremendous efforts to. Um, sort of subdue and drive out some of the, you know, negative activity that's unfortunately given Arbor Hill its reputation mm -hmm. for the better part of the last few decades. Um, and I, I call Arbor Hill a neighborhood that's very much at a tipping point, so a lot of that has quieted down or been driven out. Um, and now is the time that, you know, sort of new investment needs to happen in order to oh, okay. continue that positive trend. Well, this seems like a good start. Absolutely. Um, <laughs> actually, I just had a, um, an artist call the other day and say that he was looking for about a thousand square feet of space and I said well we don't have a studio that large but there are empty storefronts on North Swan Street and here's the contact information for the owners um, so I think it's um, you know it's something that will take time obviously but something that will definitely do, happen. Do you foresee this in any sense growing um, this, this movement or you want to call it or this may be part of Albany becoming an, like another Lark Street kind of area maybe? or Absolutely. I mean, that's our goal. That's the vision for the project is to really, um, you know, have the barn be a hub of cultural activity for the city of Albany and, and sort of 
um, become an extension mm -hmm. of downtown. Really, Arbor Hill is a downtown neighborhood, oh, sure. but but kind of gets excluded from that, um, you know, just by stigma okay. and, and perception. Um, so really hope to, to bring Arbor Hill back into the fold of that downtown community, you know, and, and work with organizations like Capitalize Albany, mm -hmm. and, you know, they're doing a lot to, you know, on impact downtown and, and the downtown okay. revitalization. A, a minute ago, you mentioned you're having some events over the year. We, we're filming this at the end of May. What are some of the events you're going to be having between now and the end of the year, like sort of significant ones that you might want to mention? Absolutely. Um, so, like I said, we are welcoming in Confetti Stage the first okay. two weekends in June. They'll be um, having a production called Bent um, in the space. Um, and then our we're actually having um, on June 16th sort of just an informational um, event for people who want to find out more information mm -hmm. about the organization, find out how to get involved, and that's uh, that's June 16th uh, from 5.30 to 7.30 at the barn. And then our annual, um, we call it an anti-gala fusion, <laughs> <laughs> uh, is coming up later in the fall, um, October 17th also. And what is that? The barn. You're, you're calling it the anti- uh... That's <laughs> sort of our, 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 um, our largest annual event. We call it an anti-gala because it's not quite as formal as a gala. Um, but what we generally try <laughs> <laughs> to do, um, you know, uh, is have an event that features a lot of different elements. Um, of a gala, of, but. Absolutely, but, <laughs> um, but we like to bring in, you know, live art exhibitions and installations. Um, you know, this year we're working on um, really paying tribute to the sort of mixed-use urban center that, that North Swan Street used to be in, and, um, sort of paying homage to the, the businesses that once lined North Swan mm -hmm. Street, um, you know, and kind of um, paying homage to that and also sort of letting people understand that that's kind of where we want North Swan Street to sure. get back to. You know, we'd love to see a laundromat, a small grocery store, uh, a barber shop, a shoe store, you know, some of those basic necessities come back into the Arbor sure, Hill neighborhood. There are beautiful storefronts. There are great people, um, you know, a neighborhood just kind of waiting for that, that right. well, um, Perhaps this is a good, a good beginning, a good first step. The website is albanybarn.org. It'll be on the screen. Have I forgotten anything, or is there anything else you'd want to... <laughs> Um, mention about your no, absolutely. I just encourage everybody to go to the website albanybarn.org. Um, you know, read about the organization, and if they have questions or are interested in getting in involved, to absolutely reach out and, and contact. And there's also a thing you can click on calendar. You can always see see your events. You've absolutely, got, there's an events calendar on the page. All of our upcoming events. There are highlighted right things the, on the right there. Yeah. Sure. So all right, well, now that's good. We'll, we'll be looking forward to seeing more events. Maybe this could be the start of, uh, of something big here in Albany. So thank you, Kristen, for coming. Thank you so much for having me. And we will see you next time on Getting to Know You.